Coming up on this Monday edition of Daybreak, police raid the headquarters of the country's major trade union, but fail to arrest railway union leaders accused of carrying out an illegal strike. Now into its 15th day, the militant union umbrella group has called an all-out strike from Saturday. The ruling party strongly protests opposition leaders' introduction of a bill to launch an investigation separate from that of the prosecutions into government agencies' alleged meddling in last year's presidential election. Plus, tens of thousands of anti-government protesters returned to the streets of Bangkok, demanding the Prime Minister immediately step down. The country's main opposition party says it will boycott elections set for February. Daybreak begins now. You're watching Daybreak on Monday, December 23rd. I'm Choi Yusan in Seoul. Let's start with a rail strike that enters its third week on this Monday. As the government called for an immediate end to the strike, uh, police on Sunday forced their way into a major union umbrella office. They, however, failed to arrest the rail union leaders accused of starting an illegal strike. Kim Hyun Bin has the latest. We will carry out the arrest warrants for the rail union leaders. The rail strike intensifies Sunday as striking rail workers clash with riot police trying to enter a building in downtown Seoul, which houses the main office of the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions, a militant union umbrella group. Hundreds of riot police surrounded the building and threw tear gas, but union members created a human blockade, locked doors with chains, and used fire hoses to push back police as they tried to enter the premises. Denouncing the police's actions, the KCTU announced that its members will launch a strike from this coming Saturday, December 28. The government continues to demand the strike and rail workers return to work. It has come to a point where the government cannot tolerate this any longer, as the prolonged illegal strike is inconveniencing the public and affecting the national economy. Over 130 union workers were taken into custody, but the union leaders they were really after were able to get away. The main opposition Democratic Party denounced the police actions. The party called for a peaceful settlement to the strike, while rebuking the Park administration and the ruling Senri party for the raid. As a railway strike rumbles into its third week, rail operations around the country remain severely impacted. Korea's bullet train KTX services are running at just 70 percent of normal levels. Even subway services in Seoul will be reduced to 85 percent of normal levels from Monday. Industries feeling the pinch worse than the public, however, with cargo train services running at just a third of normal levels. The strike started after the state-run rail operator CoRail decided to create a subsidiary for a new KTX service, a move union members say is the first step toward privatization. Human Bin, I News. An opposition alliance plans to propose a bill later on this Monday that calls for a special probe separate from that of the prosecutions into allegations that state institutions meddled in last year's presidential election. Our Kim hyun reports. The main opposition Democratic Party, the minor opposition Justice Party, and independent lawmaker An Cheol Su came together Sunday to explain what their joint bill is about. The bill calls for a special separate investigation into allegations that state agencies interfered in last year's presidential election. It targets the Defense Ministry, the Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs, the Ministry of Security and Public Administration, and the Unification Ministry, in addition to the spy agency whose former director is standing trial for allegedly ordering agents to post online messages to sway public opinion in favor of then ruling party candidate and now president Park Geun-hye. In addition, the bill says civilians who are believed to have taken part in illegal activities should also be subject to a special probe. Further, the bill says the probe should target the presidential office, the spy agency, the prosecution and the police for allegedly making attempts to downsize and conceal the results of earlier investigations and tamper with them. 
As for who should lead the special probe, the bill says a parliamentary committee should recommend two candidates and one be selected afterward. Saying President Park benefited the most from the electioneering scandal, Democratic Party leader Kim An Gil stressed that a special independent investigation was necessary. I repeat once again that if the Park administration and the ruling Senuri Party do not accept our proposal, they will face an even stronger resistance from the public. The ruling Senuri Party strongly condemned the opposition's move. To say that the prosecution pro is poor and demand a separate investigation now is an attempt by the opposition to carry this issue into next year's local elections in June and use it to their advantage. It remains unclear whether the joint bill will lead to the appointment of a special investigator, as launching a probe requires a majority of lawmakers to be in attendance in the plenary session and a majority of those voting for it. The ruling Senate Party holds 155 seats in the 300-member parliament. Kim Hyun-ji, Arirang News. Korea and China will hold their first foreign affairs and security dialogue in Beijing on this Monday. Senior officials from the two nations' foreign and defense ministries will take part in the meeting to discuss regional and global security issues as well as ways to further cooperate in these fields. In particular, they are expected to focus on the security situation on the Korean Peninsula after the execution of the North Korean leader's uncle, Chang Song Tech, as well as the escalating tensions in Northeast Asia after China's recent establishment of a new air defense zone. The meeting follows the agreement reached by Presidents Park Geun-hye and Xi Jinping during their summit talks in June to strengthen the two countries' security dialogue channel. Former NBA star Dennis Rodman will probably have to head home from his latest visit to North Korea without meeting with the country's young leader and his close friend Kim Jong-un. Speaking as he prepared to leave Pyongyang, Rodman told the Associated Press on Sunday that he had not yet had a meeting with Kim, but he stressed that he didn't expect to see Kim every time he travels to North Korea. He added his current trip was for training North Korean basketball players who will take part in the match Rodman is organizing for Kim's birthday on January 8th. In another sign that the South Korean economy is on the road to recovery, Korea's labor productivity index rose by nearly 3 percent in the third quarter of this year from a year earlier to 98.1. The index indicates the amount of goods or services a worker produces in a given amount of time. Analysts attribute the increase to a 1 percent jump in the nation's industrial output thanks to growing consumption and investment in the construction sector, while labor hours have dropped by around 2 percent. The labor productivity index of the manufacturing sector increased by 1 percent during this period, while that of the service sector surged by almost 4 percent. The total debt of Korea's nine major state-owned companies has surged by 18 trillion won, or nearly 17 billion U.S. dollars, over the first six months of this year. The nine enterprises include Korea Land and Housing Corporation and Korea Electric Power Corporation. Data released by the state-run management information provider of public agencies Al Alio shows the increase in the six-month period is over 70 percent of the total growth in debt in the year 2012. Analysts say it's highly likely the debt level of these nine companies in 2013 will exceed that of last year, despite government efforts to rein in public debt. Deputy Prime Minister Hyun Osak is expected to convene a workshop on Tuesday with CEOs of 38 public agencies to discuss ways to normalize their lax management. If you want the latest news from Korea and around the world, return to the negotiation. President Park Geun Hye plans, given the current circumstances, on your way to work or at home, ministry. the legislature will convene a... Tune into Daybreak on Arirang TV. Prime 
Tens of thousands of anti-government protesters in Thailand staged a rally on Sunday in their latest attempt to force Prime Minister Ingla Shinawa to re resign and put a halt to national elections in February. Our Sun Jung-in reports. Protesters massed peacefully at several sites across Bangkok Sunday evening as part of ongoing rallies to topple Prime Minister Inlok Sinawat and disrupt electoral candidate registrations. Blowing whistles, a symbol of the week's long protests, the crowd waved Thai flags and chanted, Inlok, get out. Demonstrators want to oust Inlok and the influence of her brother, Taksin, who protesters accused of corruption and abuse of power. Protest leader and former opposition lawmaker Sutab Taksuban urged protesters to blockade the city's democracy monument to stop candidates from signing up for the election when registration opens on Monday. We are going to sleep at the registration venues from tonight and wherever they are going to relocate the registration venues, we will follow to show our power of disapproval everywhere. He told supporters that forcing Inglok from office is necessary to purge corruption and money politics, demanding political reforms before any new election. Earlier in the weekend, Inglok formally proposed a plan for making political reforms, which includes having candidates take an oath to support the creation of a reform council and having the council's representatives come from all walks of life at local and national levels. Son jung in Arirang News. The Japanese government has decided to extend the radiation cleanup surrounding the Fukushima nuclear power plant by up to three years. Japanese media reports that the country's environment ministry will soon announce the new decontamination schedule, which was previously planned to be completed by the end of next March. Out of a total 11 municipalities subject to the cleanup, only one city, Tamura, has, been, has seen completed work. Quoting plan operator TEPCO, reports also say nearly three times the legal amount of radioactive strontium-90 was found some 25 meters below ground of reactor number four, suggesting contaminated water may have seeped deeper underground than previously thought. A part of Korea's southern coastal island that had been abandoned years ago after its resources has, has been exhausted has been reborn as the nation's largest solar power plant complex. Our Kim Min-ji has the details. This is what was left of a rocky mountain in Gogum Island in Jeollanam-do province after being excavated for more than 30 years. Debris from the quarrying was spread all over the area, making the place unsightly and dangerous. But a 600,000-square-meter energy park was recently established on the island, giving the once-neglected area a new lease on life. The 25-megawatt Kagum Energy Theme Park is the biggest in Korea, with 105,000 modules, 100 inverters and 10 transformers. The construction fee of roughly $65 million was covered by local private funds. Gagam Island was selected for a reason. The area gets more than 4.3 hours of sunlight per day on average. The island was an ideal place to set up a solar power plant. It has the longest sunshine period and, as we know, with no major changes of the weather. A healing stone park is being built inside with the money made from selling the remaining stones from the quarry, plus support funds received by the government for using discarded stones. We plan to promote this project systematically so the district can become a mecca for the renewable energy industry. More hybrid power generation programs are expected to be promoted on the island. The strong winds on the island also opened the window for a possible wind power plant down the line. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. A cold snap recently gripped the Korean peninsula, pushing mercury levels well below the freezing point. But the frigid temperatures didn't stop Koreans from embracing the special sights, sounds and savory tastes that the winter season offers. Our Paul Lee shows us more. Here, high up in the snowy mountain pass of Taegwalyang in the eastern province of Gangwon-do, lies a sea of fish basking in the frigid open air. It's here that the local specialty food called hwangtae or dried yellow pollock is made, 
with the assistance of the freezing temperatures and piercing winds. If it is not cold enough, the meat will not freeze. That's why we're working so hard to quickly freeze a fish in these cold conditions. The tasty fish, however, will take some time to prepare after being frozen and thawed repeatedly on these drying racks over the next four months. Those looking to escape to a winter wonderland can travel west to Huacheng County, where a breathtaking ice amusement park has been built inside a cave. Visitors of all ages are able to enjoy the colorful bright lights that decorate the various famous landmarks sculpted out of blocks of ice. It's a little cold, but there's so many fun things for the children to experience and for the family to have a great time. We hope to come back during the Trout Festival. Meanwhile, in the central city of Tegu, a shooting range provides a heart thumping opportunity to ring in the holiday season with a bang. I came here with my friends to go shooting after attending a wedding. Getting rid of some stress feels good, and it's even more fun when there's a friendly wager. Whether it's freeze drying golden fish or squeezing off some rounds, the crisp, cool air offers many reasons to get out and enjoy winter. Paul Yi. Arirang News. And a good Monday morning to you all as we kick things off in the major leagues. Now, after all the waiting and all the talking, Chu Xin Su has finally decided on Chu Chu choosing the Texas Rangers. Now, over the weekend, the 31 year old slugger decided on signing with the American League's Texas Rangers on a seven year deal that will pay him $130 million. Now, the deal has no options and a limited no trade clause. While the $130 million deal seems less than what the New York Yankees offered with the seven year $140 million deal, Texas does not have a state tax, while New York has a state tax of 8%. And if you calculate it all, he's technically making more than Jacoby Ellsbury, who signed for seven years and $153 million with the Yankees. And here's another athlete who cashed in big this season, Pagin B. And while it's nowhere near the $130 million, she did make a little less than $2.5 million, which is great in a single season in the LPGA. So it's no surprise that she's being mentioned left and right in the LPGA's top news of 2013. With the LPGA counting down their top 13 news of 2013, Pagin B has been mentioned often as the list is now on number 10. The 25-year-old, who won three straight LPGA Majors titles to start off the season, had one of the best seasons any golfer has had and brought attention to the LPGA once again as she hopes to continue her success going into 2014. And moving on to the KBL, where the All-Star Game took place over the weekend. And before the game tipped off, Lee Sung Jun of Tongbu won his fourth dunk contest, with SK's Pyeong Gi Hoon winning his first three-point contest. So with that said, let's take a look at the Dream Team take on the Magic Team. Now a tight game all around as the Magic Team take a slim 34-33 lead before going into halftime with a 59-58 lead. But the third quarter of the game, Magic Team and Seoul Samsung Thunder's big man Michael Dunnigan puts up 12 points in the quarter as the Magic team outscored them 43-30 in the third. The Dream Team rallies back in the fourth quarter of the game, but falls short as the Magic team take this game 119-115, with SK's Kim sun -yang winning this year's MVP after posting up 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists. And now moving on to some Sunday's V-League action as the IBK Altos beat GS Kartex three sets to nothing over on the women's side. We want an exciting game over on the men's side as Samsung Hwaja Blue Fangs took on Russian Cash Vespid. Now Samsung being Samsung in the first set as they dominate Russian Cash 25-21. But all of a sudden their offense goes Harry Houdini as the Vespid dominate the Blue Fangs in the next two sets 25-14 and 25-17. Just one win away from a huge upset here, but Leo Martinez comes alive in the fourth set. Samsung Hwaja takes the fourth set 25-21. And thanks to his 36 attack points in the game, the Blue Fangs rally back to take the fifth set 15-13 and a three sets to two victory. And now finishing things off with the 2013 Winter University in Trentino. Now, of course, with the Winter Olympics right around the corner, Korea is now pretty confident that their young athletes will do well. With the Winter University, it's coming to an end over the weekend. The Koreans finished with a total of eight gold medals, nine silver, and seven bronze. 
which is good for third overall in the medals ranking. Now, most of the medals did come from the short track and speed skating event where Korea has been dominating. Now, the third place finish only trails Russia and Poland. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Good Monday morning to you. I'm Izzy Han with your latest weather forecast. Well, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and we are waking up to another chilly morning nationwide at below freezing marks. But it's definitely warmer than what we had on the weekend. And we'll finally get a break from cold today as it will turn into much milder afternoon. Uh, so we can expect nice sunshine and mild temperatures over the majority of the area today. And right now, we have a thin layer of cloud hovering over the peninsula, uh, but skies will clear out as we go through the day, so we'll get to enjoy some nice sunshine in the afternoon. So I hope you get to take an advantage of nice weather this afternoon. And it looks like afternoon highs will stay mild till midweek, so if you plan to spend some time outside on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you won't shiver. So enjoy your time with your friends and family. Uh, but for the heads up, on Thursday, we have a rain in the forecast, which will drag down the temperatures again. So on Friday, temperatures will return to freezing side. But now today, we'll have nice mild winter weather. So let's take a closer look at those readings. Well, morning low in Seoul is starting out at minus 4, but afternoon highs will peak to 3. Daegu and Gwangju should peak 7 and 6 respectively, while Busan climb into 9 under patches of sunshine. Now let's see how other regions are looking. It looks like Jeju should see a high of 8 in the afternoon. Daejeon and Tokdo will reach at 5 and 6, while another freezing morning is in store for Mount Kumgang at minus 14 and only gets up to minus 3 in the afternoon. Now that's all for Korea, and here's the global forecast for viewers around the world. That's all for me at this hour. Enjoy your morning commute and hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to join me again for another update afternoon. And those are the stories we have for you at this hour. Stay with us throughout the day as we bring you the latest headlines.